Hello, my beautiful friends. I wanted to show you my uh, partner for this trip. <laughs> Look at Alex. Alex, baby. Alex, baby. He thinks I'm gonna take him outside, so he he's hiding. He's hiding. He doesn't want to be in the cold. <laughs> you, we usually take him right in my jacket and warm him up. But uh, this trip, uh, he is traveling with me and uh, he's been such a good partner. He's looking outside the window everywhere and uh, uh, we sleep together in the sleeping bag and he likes it nice and cozy there because cats, they, li they like little spaces. But um, today is a really cool, special day because Oh, can't you tell I'm so excited? Because we are going to um, do... Yes, Alex. Alex? Alex doesn't want me to go without him. I can't take you there. Well, we're going mushroom picking and not just mushroom, but we're going to pick Matsutake. Oh! So I have uh, obtained a permit. You must obtain a permit uh, for uh, gathering matsutake, uh, regardless of the amount that you're going to gather. And uh, the permits go like this. Minimum uh, four days uh, for $20. Um, and then maximum of uh, two months for $200. And um, well, yes, Alex, yes. Oh, Uba. Hold on. <laughs> I'm not gonna take you outside, don't worry. My partner. Um so the place itself the location of where we are is absolute secret because matsutake are um, highly prized mushrooms and they grow in just very few locations. So my guide is just taking me, because we're picking so little, he's taking me um, to his, um, his own spot, his secret location where he picks. So he is... Um, he asked me not to disclose any of that because um, there is so much competition for matsutake mushrooms. Everybody wants matsutake. Apparently, um, there used to be matsutake in Japan, but um, they no longer grow there in such abundance as they used to. But uh, the recipes are still there. It's still very much in their culture to eat matsutake. So all the matsutake that's been be, is, is been gathering, <laughs> all the matsutake that is being gathered here is being transported to Japan can you believe this and they pay like top dollar for it so I've tried matsutake last week for the first time in my life and I'm hooked it is a delicious mushroom uh, but I'm uh, for keeping them here and <laughs> giving them out to our local people uh, and I'm gonna have some if you are my neighbor or if you're curious uh, about matsutake and trying one, I'll give me a call. Hopefully I will have one uh, to give you, but I will definitely let you know. Uh, DM me if you want to try um, a matsutake. Uh, they are out of this world. Delicious. All right. Are you ready for today? I'm ready. I need to put my hiking boots and then we're going to be fully ready to go. Oh, guys, I still have to drive to the secret spot uh, from which we're also going to drive somewhere else. There's going to be lots of uh, driving because uh, the mushrooms are, um, I believe that they are uh, high elevation mushrooms. So we have to get up high somewhere and oh, what's inside? Surprise! Yes! I just can't wait. I can't wait. It's a little bit chilly already. We are, this is what? This is, is this October? Yes, we're in October. But I'm uh, 
up north in Shasta. So that's as much of a location I'm gonna give you. Somewhere in Trinity Forest. I think that's broad enough. Nobody's gonna get offended. <laughs> or should I not say that anyway? When we're picking. Matsutake are sought after and highly prized by those who have tried them. And surprisingly, they are not very well known by Californians. A long standing staple in Japanese cuisine. Most that are picked here are exported overseas and sold in fancy Japanese markets. Their unique aroma of cinnamon, pine nuts, radishes, and fresh scent of baby skin. Their one-of-a-kind flavor and versatile texture cannot compare to anything else. Before heading out to pick Matsutake, I was certain that their high price point is due to the cost of transportation, but I was wrong. Matsutake are extremely difficult to find and require one to have years of experience and extensive land knowledge to come up successful during a hunt. Besides pinning down correct elevation, the right soil type and finding combination of trees that together provide a perfect environment for the blossoming of Matsutake mycelium, one must learn to become scrupulous in spotting the tiniest of anomalies in the soil's surface, as these mysterious mushrooms often comfortably dwell as deep as a foot under the ground, leaving only a tiny crack in the earth as a clue to their presence. So we found our first Matsutake and it's hiding like this. I would have never found it by myself if it wasn't for we my guide. Sometimes. Yes, and we're gonna pick up the dirt like this. And then, voila, there he is. And now, Dylan, I've never picked this one, so can you show me further down? Sure, what so Matsutake are mm -hmm. a little uh, tricky to get out of the ground sometimes, but if you have the right tool, it's a mm -hmm. lot easier. What is this tool called? Well, this is just a pry bar that I use, but uh -huh. I like it because it's got this angled tip. Mm -hmm. It's very sturdy. So you just want to work it down next to the Matsutake, mm -hmm. kind of alongside it, and see if you can get up next to the base. The ground is a little rocky here. Mm -hmm. And so you just try and get it under the bottom of the mushroom and pop it out. Oh, wow. And this is a really nice young specimen. Yeah, so when you're trying to clean a matsutake, this one's not really hard to clean because the gills aren't open yet. You can see here the veil is still intact, connecting the cap to the stem. There's this kind of whitish area here on big mushrooms that'll open up and then you can see the gills inside. But the point is always to brush away from the gills. So if you brush into the gills, you get dirt stuck in there and it's very hard to get out later. Then just go over the top. This one's a reasonably dry specimen on the surface too, which makes it easier to clean. Just give it a good brushing. And then at the bottom, there's some dirt that doesn't come off very easy. And for that, I like to use this little towel Mm -hmm. And you just kind of really rub the bottom good with the towel. And uh, yeah, it comes out mm -hmm. nice and clean. Awesome. Yep. And a little bit of uh, field cleaning saves a lot of trouble later. Oh, it does, for sure. Right. Yep. So I think we got another one here. Uh, it could be a false alarm, but there's just kind of this crack in the ground. So peel that aside. Oh, what do you know? <laughs> I would have never looked there. There's another one. Wow. Oh, we got a double. Look at that. <gasps> wow. That's a pretty couple, huh? So we'll just go in with the pry bar again. We get under there. Sometimes you'll uh, accidentally break one or stab mm -hmm. the pry mm -hmm. bar into mm -hmm. one. But if you do it carefully, oh, wow. it's not too bad. So these are really nice, very fresh specimens. Oh my god. And these are the only mushrooms that you can actually eat raw. One of the few that I would recommend One. doing mm -hmm. that with. Mm -hmm. And with any mushroom, you know, the first time you try it, you should only have a small amount. And they're easier to digest if they're cooked. So, you know, I wouldn't eat a huge amount. But yeah, I like to snack on these out in the field. Just yeah. clean them up nice and trim off some thin slices and snack as you go. Cool. Very fresh flavor. 
Yeah. So. Yeah. R so we thought it might be a matsutake, but it's a rusula. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So funnel shaped cap. The matsutake are typically convex. Uh -huh. These are concave, and uh, they are very different from the matsutake in terms of the texture. So matsutake are fibrous. This one, if I try and snap the stem. This one's got a short stem, so it's hard. Uh -huh. And it's full of maggots, which is usually how Rusulas are, kind of mm -hmm. nasty. Um, but if you see how cleanly the stem cracked mm -hmm. right here, no fibers. If it was a Matsutake, you would never be able to snap the stem without a bunch of fibers sticking up. It also doesn't have the nice Matsutake scent. And uh, you get kind of tired of seeing these guys after a while. In principle, they're edible in practice. Well, unless you want to eat that, <laughs> not so much. <laughs> well, apparently deer doesn't like Russell either. Took a big bite of it and then spit it out. They're looking for Matsutake and left this one behind. Look at this big one. Giant Russell. They get pretty big. Wow. They're impressive in that sense. Uh -huh. That's why they get so big, because nobody likes them. Nobody wants to eat them, even the deer. Okay, another swillus. You can see the pore surface uh -huh. here. Yeah. I'll just bring that back under there. Let it do its thing. Swillus, right? Yeah, it's a little swillus. Uh, slippery jack. Slippery jack. Found a shrimp and then a family of swillus mushrooms under it. We're gonna let it be. So we just found a nice cluster here, and some of these are on the small side. You know, you can pick things that are over an inch, inch and a half, or something like these are all good. But that's a little small. This is a little small right here. Mm -hmm. So what I like to do is to prevent these from coming up, I'll sort of hold the cap down mm -hmm. while I pull the other ones out. And if you do it the right way, it's hard sometimes, but if you do it the right way, you can keep the mycelium attached here uh -huh. you'll notice that one oh, didn't wow. come out and then see how there's more little pins these uh -huh. all would have been disconnected otherwise and then they can't keep growing mm -hmm. so yes. if you're just sort of careful about how you pry them out you get them out without detaching the pins mm -hmm. and there's four nice cool. Smells like cinnamon. This one. Believe it or not, there is a matsutake in here. You can see where it's cracked just a little under this tree. I can only kind of see it from my angle. Believe it or not, I can't believe it. Well, <laughs> you spotted believe this it or one. Not, walking there around it is. the forest. Yeah. Eventually oh. you just sort of recognize the pattern and start to see them all over the place. But... Okay. Ah, but it's buggy. A little yeah. buggy. Mm -hmm. Can I rot in there? That happens sometimes when they get caught under the tree, the moisture. Mm -hmm. Sort of rot them. Maybe it's not buggy, it's more rotten. That one looks clean though. Mm -hmm. Well, on the small side, but I'll put the bad one back. Cool. Yep. So that's not a matsutake. I don't know what is. But we'll find out here. Yep. Beautiful. More mature specimen, but it should still be pretty nice. Stab it here. Oh wow. This is a pretty one. Look at the gills. Yeah. Firm stem. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Hello, my dear friends. Um, the uh, gathering of the Matsutake is over for today. And um, I am on my way uh, back to town for a moment. And then uh, I'm going to find a spot where I can um, clean up the mushrooms further and um, maybe cut them, maybe uh, eat some raw, maybe cook some, I don't know. Uh, we shall see, but I do want to prepare them for um, uh, 
uh, transporting them, right? Um, I got uh, a small bag for myself and maybe I'll share with my mom and stuff. But um, if any one of you is dying to try a matsutake mushroom, let me know and I'll uh, be happy to uh, share a mushroom with you because this flavor is not like anything else I've ever tried. I uh, am hooked on these mushrooms. I'm going to definitely miss them when the season is over. Um, what can I say? It was an amazing day. I would have never found uh, the mushrooms on my own. Um, I uh, decided not to film as much because I do see that uh, you know there are uh, there is competition not only from people from pickers but uh, from the deer and um, I know that uh, uh, it is it was uh, my uh, guide's personal spot so I decide I, I don't want to give away too much but uh, definitely I hope you enjoy uh, everything that I have uh, included into the video and I tried to include as much as possible without giving away too much information. Uh, all I can tell you, uh, picking mushrooms is a wonderful experience. Uh, it is a, an, an amazing experience when you do it with somebody who knows. Uh, I would not recommend going out there on your own. Uh, it, not only for safety reasons but also just it's more fun uh, to listen to somebody who is educated on uh, the subject. So. Uh, if you ever need uh, a guide, I can ask uh, uh, mine if he is willing uh, to share um, his knowledge with more people. Um, so DM me uh, for that. And uh, what else? Uh, oh my God, I had a beautiful, beautiful experience. Wow, these mushrooms, they're su such a mystery. They are so mysterious and they grow in such unpredictable conditions. Uh, the way they grow here in uh, Trinity Alps in Mount Shasta, um, uh, Shasta Trinity Forest, uh, is completely the conditions that they choose here, the mycelium chooses, is completely different from the conditions that are, um, let's say, uh, in uh, uh, Washington State or in Oregon or uh, by the coast. Uh, it is so interesting how um, how nature works and the preferences that um, mycelium has and uh, which trees it works with well together um, all of this is just fascinating these relationships this entanglement of life and what fascinated me also was that um, deer have a preference for mushrooms just like people i thought that only people have these preferences between uh you know uh deliciousness delicious flavor um the uh that um for wildlife you know they would probably uh like any mushroom as long as it is food as long as it has nutrition but apparently it is not so uh the deer um take bites of uh, uh, Ursula mushrooms and uh, just spit them out. They don't like them, but uh, they have dug up so many of the um, uh, Matsutake mushrooms that you can just see like holes and holes and maybe just tiny um, little stumps left of the uh, full complete mushrooms. Yes, honey. Yes, my baby, you want to participate in the video? My cat. All right, well, it was another fantastic experience of interacting with nature. I've learned so much um, from uh, my guide, Dylan. Uh, he is absolutely incredible. He even taught me how to navigate by the sun today, something that um, you just, it's so hard to learn it from a book, you know? I can't learn it from a book. I get out there and uh, I don't understand. But when it's a person uh, relaying the information to you, telling you, it's a completely different um, experience. 
when you're doing it on the spot and you're learning as you go, as you need something, as the question arises, as the need and that knowledge arises, you learn. Uh, it, it just naturally sucks right into you, right? Instead of you trying to shove it in, shove it in, memorize it, push it in, push it in, push it in, and then you get uh, to the place where you need it and you're like, oh, ouch, I don't remember. So um, just sharing this experience with you. Um, and I hope this inspires you to explore nature because it's awesome. There is nothing better than it. And if you do go out in nature and explore it, please um, always give back. There's so many ways to give back to nature. Uh, you can read stories to the trees. You can tell them stories. You don't have to read. You can tell them your own personal stories. You can clean up trash whenever you see it. I always have garbage bags full of trash that I bring out of the forest. Um, what else can you do? Of course, don't leave anything behind but your footsteps. And always, 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 always say thank you uh, to, um, to the forest, to nature, to the environment, and to the people that uh, have showed you uh, these places. Love you. Bye. And the biggest thank you goes to my fellow YouTuber, Alex. Thank you, Alex. Please follow us, share, like, subscribe, and know that clarity is pretty to perceive.